Okay, good <coughs> afternoon everyone. Welcome to the presentation. Our talk is about neutron-to-neutron -neutron SDN backbone traffic engineering. Uh, short introduction, my name is uh, Yuri Babenko. I work for Deutsche Telekom, uh, focusing on our NFE cloud. Uh, I'm Sudhir Charvatur. I work for Juniper, uh, SDN engineering. Uh, my name is Sukhdev Kapoor. I'm a distinguished engineer at uh, Juniper. I work with the Open Contrail team. Okay, so let's start with a problem statement. Uh, as we know, service providers have established IP MPLS backbones. At the same time, if you look around, a lot of cloud providers, what they are doing is basically building dedicated inter-data center one connectivity for the inter-data center needs and communication between data centers. Um, probably service providers need to consider how to utilize already existing backbone assets um, to provide better connectivity and uh, fulfill the needs of data centers. Um, distributed data centers, per se, have some traffic engineering needs, um, and it would be ideal that data centers will be able to inform and request these traffic engineering resources from the one, the backbone in between. This results essentially in a API which can exist between data center orchestration piece and a backbone orchestration piece on this SDN level or SDN controller level. This API or traffic engineering API does not exist today. So basically the focus of our talk today is on this API. We are going to discuss potential use cases, potential benefits, as well as a model how we imagine this can be done. So the main key trends which we observe today in the service provider area is that first of all, um, obviously Neutron OpenStack is a de facto standard inside of data centers, leveraging SDN technology. At the same time, what we see is that there is a big trend inside of the backbones themselves where service providers think a lot on how to utilize existing assets, existing technology, and how to make it basically better with new approaches coming from the SDN world. Um, what we also see is that right now there is no direct interface which allows um, data centers and the backbone in between to interact on the traffic engineering needs. Which use case we can imagine if, let's say, this interface would exist? We can think about latency sensitive applications, uh, thinking about um, evolvement or development inside of 5G standards, uh, low latency networks. We can think about um, some regulatory constraints where some traffic should not leave the borders of a particular country due to some regulatory requirements. We can also think about guaranteed bandwidth or end-to-end -end connectivity if we want to think about, let's say, data center interconnect use cases. So these are potential use cases which can emerge if, let's say, we would have such a kind of API between data center and backbone assets. Um, the main requirements which one could have on such an API. First of all, we are um, working here with two different domains. First of all, we have a backbone domain which has established technology, which has its own rate of innovation, pace of innovation. And at the same time, we see a huge involvement in the data centers themselves, projects like Neutron, new developments with containers. We wanna have a common set of protocols and APIs between these two domains, but the, any concept which, will be, which, which we will think about should not limit the pace of innovation in, in, in both of these areas. So we would not want to, let's say, couple these areas tightly. They should be able to evolve on themselves. Uh, second as aspect is separation of concerns. Obviously, there are dedicated resources and dedicated operational teams today which focus on backbone and data center assets. We think that these separate teams should preserve as they are today due to different requirements, different expectations, and different technology which is used. Neutron is de facto standard inside of data center, so any concept which we will discuss today should be able to, first of all, work with um, uh, reference implementation inside of OpenStack Neutron, but should be also be flexible if you would like to use some SDN technology or SDN controllers on top of that. Um, the high level look of a service provider backbone, um, what we see here is a interworking of different assets. We have data centers, 
We always think, try to think about so-called back-end and front-end data centers, which help to meet our needs in service provider area. Um, so front-end data centers are more near to the customer, distributed um, across um, the country, whereas back-end data center are more like a classical data center providing high availability and uh, reliable, reliable service. We also have telco assets or service provider assets like edge routers or access BNG routers, broader network gateways, which deliver our access services. What we see here is basically the idea is to say, now we want to combine these assets and think about use cases which we can build out of these uh, different technologies. So what's the model today, right? Uh, DC and the backbone <coughs> networks have decoupled control planes, right? There is a separate workflow uh, that the, uh, the backbone providers use to provision TA networks. Uh, DCs have their own uh, uh, methodology, right? So sometimes a, a backbone network is not aware of the real-time demands of a DC network, right? And since they don't talk to each other, uh, any change requires, you know, a triggered uh, setup on both sides, a DC and a backbone, right? Um, uh, backbone conducts its own capacity planning and demand forecast, right? Uh, DC networks assumes quantity of service. Uh, for the most part, we assume fa fabric has infinite capacity, and we try to load balance across links, and when needed, we add more links. Uh, backbone networks use traffic engineering to uh, squeeze every ounce of capacity from the network, right? So the approaches taken are, are different to that. So this is just <clears throat> a layout uh, slide in terms of uh, highlighting the management plane, the control plane, and the data plane. So in subsequent slides, when, we hear, when you hear control plane and data plane, this is what uh, we mean. Right, so if you look at it at you know, three verticals, you have your DC uh, layer, and then you have your WAN orchestration, and WAN control plane, and WAN data plane, and of course, the transport. Right? In some cases, technologies like MPLS you know, play a role in both the control plane and the data plane. In control plane, of course, for label distribution, whereas in the data plane, it's for packet forwarding. So <clears throat> this is more uh, a slide on you know, what are the roles and responsibilities. Right? The backbin, uh, backbone SDN controller provides visibility of the networking resources within the backbone. So this is your typical network graph, your nodes, links, and then the attributes, the traffic engineering attributes, like bandwidth, you know, uh, shared risk link groups, or fate sharing uh, mechanisms of a given link. So these are all part of the uh, backbone SDN controller gives you this visibility. The Neutron DB provides uh, visibility into networking resource within a DC, right? These are modeled differently today, right? Um, <clears throat> data centers generate various type of traffic, uh, including real-time traffic, delay-sensitive, best-effort traffic. Right? We need a common language to describe this so that these types of traffic generated by data centers are, can be traffic engineered uh, properly, right? Uh, while in the in backbone networks we you know provide uh, equal uh, you know they created equal on the WAN, we need a way to discern them so that we can engineer them uh, properly, right? So, <clears throat> so this brings to the logical model of how information is exchanged between two controllers, right? The dotted line represents the channel, and the direction of, of information exchange, right? And this information exchange between the DC controller and IPMPLS uh, controllers, by the way, I keep using backbone controller, IPMPLS controller interchangeably, so they mean the same thing, right? Uh, through uh, defined APIs. So at the end of the day, we need to cover, what do these APIs need to do? They need to cover two aspects, right? So we are looking to compute a path to provide connectivity across uh, DC centers through the backbone. So we need a way to, to compute a path, you need the topology information, right? That is one. Second thing is we need a way for controllers to request the creation of the path uh, so that we, the paths can be set up in the backbone, 
with the appropriate uh, resource reservations that need that is needed. So <clears throat> that you know this request can be a typical client server model. All right. So what is topology, right? So today, uh, data center uh, topologies are too complex for uh, for T controllers, right? What I mean by com the complexity is not from the full mesh of connectivity uh, that that is available in, in data center. The thing is, the, the traffic engineering or the T controller does not need that level of detail to compute the path, right? So we can kind of simplify the complexity by creating an abstraction. Uh, of the topology of the network. Right? There are many ways to uh, create this abstraction. Right? And what we need is we need to create the abstraction and then specify it in a predefined standardized model. Right? So one example we have here is you know, take a, you know, a real DC where we have a couple of gateway routers, a bunch of spines and, and leaves. Right? So these can be abstracted to, for example, you know, two uh, gateway routers, two spin, you know, uh, spine uh, nodes and a bunch of leaf nodes with abstracted links across. Right? These can now be specified uh, from the DC controller in a well-defined Yang model. Uh, right. So IPS, the IPMPLS controller or TE controller or backbone controller in the end are just an optimization engine. Right? It's a path computation engine which collects topology and computes paths at the request of the clients. Right. So if you follow the picture below, so DC controller is exporting the abstract topology to the IPMPLS uh, controller. And the DC controller is kind of requesting a path. Basically, now that I have a, a, a computer path from A to Z with certain attributes, you know, X amount of bandwidth or avoid certain links, right? the IPMPLS controller, now that it has knowledge of the topology and the reachability from A to Z, can compute the path and says, okay, these are the this is the path that you should take, uh, or this is the path that is provisioned uh, to, to carry your traffic. Okay. Um, MPLS is, it provides a toolbox that can be used, right? So we have various uh, employees, and MPLS has been deployed widely in, in, in the network today. We have RSVP and LDP and BGPLU for label distribution. By right? being a toolbox, MPLS also allows what we call combinability, right? So you can basically you know, not be constrained by one particular distribution protocol. You can, take, you can combine a bunch of them. For example, LDP over RSVP or you know, use uh, you know, what's called a binding SID in, in spring terminology to bind LSPs together, disparate LSPs together. Right? So MPLS allows you that capability. And the beauty of this is with this uh, scheme that we have with the, with, the, with the APIs, the WAN and the DC controller working in, in conjunction, working together, can hide all that complexity uh, from you. It right? can completely hide it, you don't have to worry about it. And now I'll hand off to uh, Sutev to. So, uh, so we are looking at connecting the front and the back end, where the front end can request the back end uh, certain uh, specific requirements from the back end network. So, why is it relevant to the open stack? Because we want to do it in an open, uh, open fashion, right? So. The neutron and the, the backbone MPLS uh, controllers, they must be able to exchange uh, the information via a standardized uh, interface rather than a proprietary. So essentially the goal is to build an API which is a, a vendor neutral, technology neutral. So, so it's not like tied to a given specific vendor. So, so anybody and everybody can use it. You know, it benefits the operators, it benefits the vend uh, vendors, and, and everybody's winner in this case, right? So, uh, and the information exchange between the DC controller and the VAN controller uh, should be described in a standardized manner, right? Through, through this an API. So one thing uh, which is going for us is that the, the foundation work is already laid out by BGP VPN. So there, there already exist uh, 
a service plugin in Neutron, which does allow to consume resources uh, from, uh, from, uh, for the BGP VN related uh, information, right? So the next step is how do we sort of bring in the traffic engineering uh, information with that, right? So, so that's where the OpenStax relevance uh, comes into play. So uh, how do we do it? So we've looked at a few ways. We've, uh, we've considered working with the, uh, the BGP VPN team to see if we can uh, add an extension to the existing API to be able to carry this additional information which is needed by the traffic engineering. Okay. And uh, in this slide, we are sort of proposing that possibly bringing in a new service uh, plugin along with the BGP VPN plugin, whereby this service plugin will talk directly, you know, the uh, traffic engineering API with the van controller. So, so what this does is it makes, uh, it doesn't really tie it into one specific te uh, technology, it makes it, it keeps it technology agnostic if somebody wants to do it in a different fashion and not be tied to the BGP VPN, it gives that flexibility. But we're not, uh, we don't have a, a specific rigid religion at this point, you know, so that's one of the things uh, we are sort of coming back at the community to come and work with us and tell us uh, if, if you have, you know, we're gonna discuss, uh, Yuri will talk about more use cases, we're gonna talk about those use cases. If you have any uh, use case where you would like to see this API uh, act differently. We want your feedback. So we will be kicking off this activity in, in a Neutron where uh, we will initiate this program. And obviously we want a wider participation from the wider audience. Uh, here is an example of like, how does this API look like? So this is just as an example. So uh, for instance, uh, the data center application is requesting uh, a, a certain guaranteed bandwidth from the back end and with the minimum delay. So, so it's as simple as that. Five, basically five parameters are needed. You, know, you specify the named LSP, the source address, the destination where you're getting at, and, and the guaranteed requirement, required bandwidth and with, of course, the lowest delay, right? Now, uh, like Yuri mentioned earlier in the beginning part of the presentation, that you may want to pick the path based upon geographical preference. A certain traffic should not go out of the country or, or, or whatnot. So, so we could add additional parameters, proximity related or, or, or whatnot. So. So this is something where we can really uh, use, you know, everybody's help, uh, you know, and, and, and a community-wide participation, and uh, so that we can make it as generic as possible, so that depending upon your use cases, depending upon the operator's needs, and depending upon the vendor's implementation, it could be very easily extended. So that would be our goal to build this uh, API. Okay. Okay, so mm -hmm. now if we imagine that we have this API, what, what, which use cases we can potentially realize with that? So imagine that now data centers, distributed data centers and the backbone in between can interact on, with the help of this traffic engineering API. And, and data center can now basically dynamically request traffic engineered resources inside of the backbone. Um, backbone is now able to facilitate these demands real time or near real time and provide the necessary resources on the traffic engineered paths between location A and location Z. These locations can be two data centers, but they can also be, let's say, one data center on the left and a broader, uh, border network gateway on the, on the right or some piece of uh, mobile infrastructure. So it shouldn't be necessarily a data center interconnect use case. Um, with, with that, VNF is now able to dynamically address the demands and these demands will be met by the, by the backbone in between. One of the examples, potential use cases, which can be realized is uh, a geographical constraints use case, where we will say some particular traffic 
should not leave the borders of a particular routing domain. It can be a country, it can be some region, whatever. This now is, able, is possible with the help of such, a, such traffic engineered API in between. Um, other potential use case, which is obvious, is um, low latency traffic. Um, some application, maybe 5G application or something else, which requires low latency pass, is now able to dynamically request these resources inside of the backbone, and backbone can facilitate these resources and provide the low latency pass for this application. So it can be on the left side, can be some piece of mobile infrastructure, mobile gateway, and on the right side is the backend piece of mobile infrastructure running in the data center. Through the API now, the controllers can exchange and these resources will be provided in the, data, in, in the backbone in between. Um, today for that, uh, probably two separate workflows are needed, one inside of data center, one inside of backbone, um, and this will take longer time, obviously, as with the help of uh, a direct API in between. We can think about further use cases like bursting or uh, data center interconnect or storage replication or whatever problems or needs you might have with, with your applications. So if, you, if you're building your applications out of backbone and, and data centers. So these are potential use cases, sounds amazing. And now let's basically come to the conclusion and um, have some final discussion. So traffic engineering API, <laughs> allow us a direct interaction between data centers and um, backbone in between. Um, we think that Traffic Engineering API can be realized as a neutral service plugin, uh, which will be vendor neutral, and will allow us to leverage neutron per se, but also to use existing SDN controllers inside of data centers, as well as emerging controllers in the backbone. The way how the controllers will work in a specific domains will not change. So Neutron will work as it works today, any SDN plugin into Neutron will work as it works today, and SDN controller inside of Backbone will work as it works today. So this does not change. We add additional capability and now can leverage both pieces of this infrastructure. The realization of this API helps um, folks like service providers or any different company using Backbone and data center to leverage and build new use cases, which we previously described. And finally, this API helps VNFs or applications inside of data centers to dynamically request resources, which can be then met by, by the Backbone in between. So if you feel like this is interesting for you, we have a uh, Etherpad, which you can join and comment or add your use cases, add your contact details, or you can just ping any of us um, the email list is on the screen, and we are looking for feedback for any commands, any ideas, uh, any critique you might have to see if, if that, that makes sense to the community, and we should look forward on that. Yes. Okay, so we are at the end of the presentation and open for your questions. Thank you. So this will be um, obviously helpful for data center to data center across a, a single service provider network, which is typically one hop on the internet. Um, I'm thinking why not scaling it to internet scale? So dealing with both the traffic engineering inside one hop, but also with <coughs> DNS across the internet. So if I have a private cloud, and my Neutron uh, module can signal the first hop provider about my request to better SLA, delay, bandwidth, whatever, um, will be signaled uh, across. So it's a different mindset, I know, than what you present, but what do you think about that? Yeah, definitely uh, uh, this can be uh Operated right, so you can have a model where you can have a couple of SDN control, one SDN controllers talking to each other in the you know path computation model that we have today, uh, to kind of try to you know set up paths and you know connect the two service providers to provide uh, an end-to-end -end connectivity. It is definitely possible, right? But at the end of the day, uh, uh, it's it's about what 
you know what topologies how the services are so the domain of connecting two uh, clouds is not particularly relevant to this particular thing other than okay how the peering exchanges happen between those uh, two uh, service providers right that is not what this guy is saying but yes you can extend it but that is separate uh, you know handshake between two controllers sdn controllers right managing those service providers is that answer your question Um, the the cloud environment mm -hmm. on one data center and and the other has the neutron modules. So your talk is about yes. neutron to no, neutron, neutron, meaning right. through traffic engineering, engineering. of MPLS. So right. it's it's very specific use case of MPLS. Less, yes. MPLS. Yes. One hop and yes. then. One data center of one cloud provider and another. Yes. Right. Yes. Not internet across. Not. It can be extended. Any open stack to any open, open stack. stack. Yeah. Currently, yes. currently the way we are proposing the API, you're correct. That is for the for the first half. Now, so connecting between two providers, that is something. That's not something we are proposing See. in here, but that's a that's definitely a, a, a good use case, and. That would require how this information get exchanged between the two backend uh, controllers, two two WAN controllers controlled by two different service providers. Yeah. So we, yeah, we are not thinking about that in this particular case. This, what we are trying to do is we are trying to build a, a sort of foundational work so that this this eventually gets into those more complex use cases. All right. Thank yeah, you. that that that's the goal. There is. Yeah. Mike, please. I'm just thinking from a customer perspective. Today we have services like Ceridion that you can use on the internet to ask for resources. So the ability to get this kind of SLA for enterprise, private customers. Not specifically for like Uh, I have another question. Uh, what about the controllers? Do you, uh, you want this to become an IEEE standard so you, the controller developers are going to build it into their controllers or do you want it to be based on ODL or what? No, so this, the, 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 the API which we are proposing here is the, uh, the API between the, the Neutron and, and the SDN controller. No, that SDN controller can be any. So it could be ODL, it could be Contrail, it could be Nuage, or, 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 or anything. And that's why we want to build it in an open fashion, and that's why we want to build it in a standards-based, so that it works for everybody. And that's why we need community's help to, to come and talk to us, tell us, because we're going to be possibly pushing a, a blueprint to get this uh, uh, initiative going. But we, to in, in order to ratify it, in order to get it right, and, and to make sure it works for everybody, that, that's what we want to do. I think the idea is also to use um, ITF existing model or extend the model so that this model can be basically applied by voice thoughts. Yeah. That's so that's, that's a proposal. There was a question here. Um, it's a, like a personal question because I've been playing a lot with, with this myself. Uh, how are you thinking about dealing when, with when you have capabilities that you ask for and then some of them can be obliged and some cannot? And, and you know, like I, I set up a path and I have a primary and a secondary path, but I also say that it must be a maximum of five milliseconds and there must be no single point of failure. Right now, in many topologies, um, you know, you can't get them all. Yeah. So, so, so we we thought about that. In fact, we did we did have a few discussions about that. Uh, one model was ACNAC. You know, where you know whatever you're asking for it, if the backend cannot support it, it's an ACNAC. If it can support it, it's an ACNAC. Other model is we we're, we're really thinking about is that you request 
the response comes back. For, for example, in the earlier slides, you know, give me a path between A and Z, the, the result comes back A, X, Y, and Z, right? You could possibly want to influence, you want to say A, B, X, Y, Z, or something like that. So, so those are more details, right? And, and we are very cognizant about it, and uh, that is something we want to, once we get into the details and the implementation, that's where we want to take it off, on the IRCs, on the meetings. So what, what we will do is, once we get this thing going, we will sort of kick off weekly discussions. We'll, we'll kick off a meeting where you know, we would want people to participate, come in and bring up pretty much these use cases you're talking about. But the very simple, very simplistic approach is like just to get going, ACK NACK. Okay, this is my requirement. Okay, if the back end says, yes, I can meet that, ACK. Otherwise, it's a NACK, something so, like that. Just are you, are you looking for, okay, you know, if this is not available, then do this and then do this. Like, for example, if bandwidth not, you know, bandwidth not available, then what's the next best that I should try to satisfy? Yeah. Those kind of requirements, the, I guess, the is the what. The problem with best is that it's very subjective. Yes. Right? Yes. So. Okay. Yeah, so there has to be, yeah. So the API can provide those options. For example, you saw min delay is one such characteristic, right? It has to, so you can specify a delay bound, you know, and then compute a partner. If that's not available, then okay. You can say, okay, if that's not available, what would you do? Like those kind of options, that's what, that's what they were saying. And it's something that we can build on. Um, hi. Uh, thanks. I, I, I really think this idea does matter. Uh, but uh, I have not kind of a question, but maybe kind of a comment. Uh, so if you can, back to your slides, uh, maybe. Right. So which slide? Which one? Uh, yeah, you can you maybe, yeah. As uh, this slide is okay, I think. So uh, considering you, 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 you said about the design, you, um, uh, you still want uh, uh, all domains, I mean data center domain and uh, one domain will be completely independent. So, uh, uh, so I would say uh, I, I like this idea if uh, T API uh, will be, uh, how to say, uh, will be between uh, Neutron and uh, data center is the end controller. But one is the end controller and data center is the end controller. Uh, why, I, I'm not sure if T API will be uh, a good, uh, good choice. Maybe BGP or BGP ELS will be much more scalable in this case because uh, uh, this protocol probably, uh, I think it's ma mature enough to provide such kind of, uh, you know. Uh, so you're talking about BGP LS? The BGP, B yes. Okay, so BGP LS today, we basically do topology. Right? There's another element to this. But, but you can implement probably both. Yes, you can use both. I mean, you can use BGP and BGP LS. Like. Yes, the one other aspect is to request service as well. Right. In addition to yes. topology, you also want to be able to request a certain resource from your backbone. That BGPLS does not provide. Right. <coughs> yes. That's the point. Who, who is requesting what from whom? So is a data center requesting resources or is it a backbone telling to data center, that's what I have. You can use either this bus or that bus, select whatever you want for you right now for your application. This is kind of also open question we okay. discuss. So there is no valid answer, we should, we should see what makes sense. Boss is potentially thinkable, like who is providing what to whom. Yeah. So but one of my suggestions would be the, the etherpad which we uh, posted here, uh, I just created it, there are, there's nothing much really, it's, it's, it's an entry point, so that we, wanna, we want your feedback, go, go to that etherpad, it's a very simple, just remember the last part, right? And, and just go there, and, and put your thoughts, you know, whatever, because once we uh, publish a blueprint, we want to possibly incorporate as many use cases, you know, we want to cover as broadly as possible. Yeah. Uh, following probably the, the question of the first gentleman that asked about the uh, generic uh, to open stack, private open stack uh, data centers. Uh, my question is, uh, assuming that today 80% of the world is not SDN one controller based, 
and assuming that 80% of the world is basically as the gentleman described, internet-based, data center, private data centers. Do you have in mind any proposal or a, can you please elaborate about a proposal where this idea can connect to standard routers, no SDN controllers, but standard routers, and make the standard routers to make the decision from you know, the one perspective to create the traffic engineering tunnels and at the same way to terminate that traffic into private data centers using OpenStack? Can you elaborate about that idea? If, if so, you consider that as a valid idea. So, so what, what we are saying in, in this uh, API, TEAPI, is twofold. One is where a controller can talk to a controller, right? But the way we are proposing the implementation, it's a service plugin, right? Once you have a service plugin, backend is uh, anything. It, you know, uh, it can talk to the router, it can talk to yet another controller which talks to the WAN controller. The problem or is that the router doesn't have an API that talks to a, you know, a service plugin. That's, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, so you're, you'll have to build some kind of a wrapper in there. So, I mean, uh, I have not thought through that use case, but, but this is a, nonetheless is and a that's good... That's 80% of the use cases. Well... <laughs> that's 80% of the world. I mean, the world is 80% non-SDM-based controllers. It's yeah, that, based on routers and that, based on switches, right? Sure. So, so that probably depends on your perspective. So if you, if you are thinking about use cases where you need to combine both of these assets, then you are on that use case. If you are a user of a private data center, then you're right. So then probably this use case will not work because you have no instance to which you can talk which have the overview of the whole assets in, in between your data centers. So b basically the premise would be than to have a, a visibility method for this uh, proposal as a, va as a valid point of entry. You need a visibility way yeah. to, to oversee the network, yeah. right? That, yes. that, that is the bottom line. Yes, exactly. because okay. we are computing paths, so we need the topology. Yeah. Yes. OK, any other questions? OK. No. <laughs> sure. That is. I see nobody else. <laughs> We have four minutes. I wonder about the user of the service. So I request the service for what? So neutron side, network based, VM based. You provide that service for the entire network or the network port. Yeah. What so that, that that's a good question. So so this is yeah. So now you're really hitting the the, the right point. So yeah. So you you have a v, so. So two ways. One is we're, the way. Uh, yesterday only we were talking about this. So I, I think what we are thinking is that you you have an essentially a network. Say say you have a blue network and a red network between two data centers, which is running to the. You want to say my blue network is a uh, low priority network. My red network is a high priority network. So you want to have the ability to change the characteristics of a network through this API, right? So that's the way we are looking at it, right? So, so you have a VM which is running these services. Possibly the VM is running connect, connected to both networks or to different servers. It doesn't matter, right? But, but right now the thought process is that's the way we are looking at it, right? So you're extending the network which is spanning across the two data centers and, and you want to be able to influence the, the characteristics or the performance of the network, so to speak. So, yeah, that's, network. Yes. Yeah, that, so, that's, that's the way we're thinking. So, there's another way to look at this thing is also the API that you provide is kind of the underlay, right? So, you, you set up your path. What you're asking for is how do you steer traffic into that path? Okay, that's the service mapping uh, part. That's internal to Neutron. In, yeah. Internal to Neutron. Yeah, right? So, we just give you the underlay and then you, yeah. you know, put the overlay. Yeah. Okay, thanks for great questions. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you.